Good afternoon. We are Sumner Construction Company and we're here to present our construction services proposal for the Randolph Intergenerational Community Center. My name is Kyle Gillis. I'm James Landry. I'm Jake Skirgit. And I'm in Cincinnati. And once again, we are Sumner Construction Company. And the Randolph Intergenerational Community Center is an 18,000 square foot community center with a gym. The community center consists of um, some classroom spaces, some office spaces, a dance studio, it even has a greenhouse. It's um, a lot of different kind of things that are going on and Randolph is trying to implement within their community. And then they also have a gym with a full-size basketball court and an uh, overhead track. Um, and today we're at the 60% uh, construction documents phase and this is when you, Wentworth Enterprises, has requested our construction services proposal. Just to give you an overview of our presentation, we're going to go through the estimate, schedule, project management plan, quality management plan, contract administration, risk management, the safety that we're going to implement on our project, our sustainability efforts, and our efforts to reach out to the public. And then we'll give you a small summary at the end. I'm going to be going through the estimate, and I'm going to provide you a um, bid package breakdown with a summary. Um, our general conditions and general requirements that we are going to use for your job and break down the staffing costs further. Um, then we'll present to you our guaranteed maximum price and a cash flow analysis that we have created for the project. Shown on the right um, is our full breakdown of the bid package costs coming out to $5.8 million. Um, we've categorized each build package into a color code uh, according to the structure and shell, MEP, interior work, and specialty systems. Um, you can see that each bid package is labeled with a color and the uh, TAN number next to uh, its associated bid packages represents um, where design is fully complete and where we have finalized bids from subcontractors for these areas. This includes uh, concrete, structural steel, glass and glazes, and um, elevators. Moving forward, uh, this is just a table uh, displaying all of our general conditions and general requirements. These costs come out to $649,000. Just to highlight some of these costs, the staffing that I will detail further in a second, um, the insurance that we have carried for the job, some points that we have carried for um, different subcontractors to utilize on our project, uh, a forklift with a laborer that we are directly hiring so that each subcontractor does not need to bring their own forklift on site or have any of their own personnel using a forklift. They can just utilize ours and this is to cut down on cost um, and temporary utilities and our field office for the project. Uh, this is our staffing cost breakdown. Jake is going to go further into um, what each member of our team is going to be responsible for on the project and he's going to go over go through that through the uh, project management plan but we just wanted to display to you um, the amount of time that we put into budgeting our hours for your job and showing you who's going to be on the job at what time and this cost comes out to four hundred and seven thousand dollars so our guaranteed maximum price um, includes that $5.8 million for the bid packages that we displayed to you earlier are $649,000 for our GCs and GRs. This comes out to $6.5 million uh, before fees, and we've carried a construction fee of 6% and a contingency of 5%. This comes out to $7.2 million for your project. And with that $7.2 million, we've created a cash flow analysis by month for the project. Uh, each of the bars represents how much uh, we plan to be putting in place for construction um, on the project and what we will be billing um, accordingly. And this helps us track progress as well. Um, you can see that the scale on the left here represents the bars and the line represents the cumulative amount of construction put in place and that uh, scale is shown to the right and totals up to our 7.2 million. Now I'm going to hand it off to Vince to talk about the schedule. Yeah, so thanks Kyle. So uh, once again, I'm Vincent Zanella and I'm going to be talking about the project schedule today. So uh, before I get into some of the details of the schedule, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our scheduling process here at Sumner Construction. So um, each month we're going to be updating our baseline P6 schedule and providing you with 
uh, a schedule narrative so we have a clear and accurate snapshot of where we are in the job. And in addition to our kind of our contractual obligation as far as the uh, P6 updates go, that we're early adopters at Sumner Construction Company and we're big believers in pull planning. So we know that pull planning is a somewhat new uh, scheduling methodology out there and it's really based on the ideas of instead of the traditional kind of construction starting at the beginning and linearly going forward, it's pulling backwards from milestones. So just kind of how we plan uh, and schedule things in our everyday life. You know, if you're going to go to the airport, you know, before your flight leaves, you need to factor in some time to find your gate, to go through TSA security, to park the car. It's going to take an hour to get there. And then after we figure out all that time, then we're able to figure out when it is we need to leave for the airport. We wouldn't want to just randomly pick 12 o'clock and hopefully we get there for our 2 o'clock flight. So, some of the advantages that we've found from pole planning is it's a really team-oriented approach. So we're able to use our expertise as the construction manager as well as the expertise of the subcontractors. And together, um, with that combined effort, we've been able to come up with more accurate schedules and we've been able to see issues before they even happen. So we can be more proactive as to issues with our schedule rather than reactive and possibly lose time. So our schedule overview. Um, our project is going to start on August 10th of 2018. There's going to be 16 months of construction, and then our project will be complete by December 23rd of 2019. So here I created a summary schedule with just some of the major overarching activities that we have in the job, starting with our site and foundation, structural steel, exterior skin, and ending with our MEP and interior work. So I've also included the start and the finish dates next to those bars with the start date on the left and the finish date on the, on the right. And here again is um, kind of our uh, project milestones that we said that's really a core foundation of our pull planning principles. So our major project milestones include our notice to proceed when we plan to begin foundations, when the foundations will be complete and be ready for steel, when that structure will be complete, when our building um, will be weather tight, uh, when we plan to reach substantial uh, completion and be able to get our certificate of occupancy. And then two weeks later, our project will be totally complete on December 23rd of 2019. So just to talk a little bit more about some of our major activities with our foundation activities, we want to try to fast track this operation with having our excavation crew start on the uh, project south side of the community center. So once they have those footings and foundations excavated and move over to the east side of the building, then our foundation crew is going to be able to jump right in that hole and um, start working. And then this uh, operation is going to continue to work in a counterclockwise fashion around the building, which we'll be able to see a little bit clearer in Jake's site logistics plan. And we're going to be beginning our foundations two weeks after uh, the start of the project, after we get our mobilization and site setup complete, and we'll be ready for steel by December 14th. So for our structural steel, it's going to follow the same flow as our foundations. They're going to be starting on the south side of the community center and then working counterclockwise around the building. So our foundations will be complete on December 14th, and then our structure um, will be complete by March 6th of 2019. So our exterior skin here, I've highlighted three of the major activities that we have going on for our exterior skin, being the roofing, the exterior sheathing, and the glass and glazing. Again, I've provided the start and the finish dates for those um, activities there. So after our structure is complete on March 6th, our, bu our building will be weather tight by uh, September 3rd. So for our interior work, in a similar fashion to the exterior skin, I've highlighted some of the major activities going on once we um, reach a weather tight building, which is going to be great so that we don't have to worry about weather damaging any of our interior work. So we have the MEP, the drywall, and the gym work. And um, after all of that work is complete, then we'll be reaching substantial completion, be able to get a certificate of occupancy by December 12th of 2019. So during closeout, um, we hope that we're uh, going to only need two weeks to complete any additional punch list items. We want to be punching things out as we're going along. We don't want that punch list process to drag out. We don't want to wait until the end and try to pull subcontractors back onto the site. We want to get things fixed while they're already there. 
and our commissioning process is going to start on September um, 16th and that's going to go to November 22nd. So that's going to allow for any additional time for any issues that may come up during some of the commissioning reports so we can get all of those problems resolved by the time we get to project completion, which again is December 23rd of 2019. So now uh, we're going to discuss our project management plan. Uh, thank you, Vince. I'm Jake, and I'll be talking about the project management plan. Just a little overview here. We'll start with our project staffing, then move on to our labor relation and uh, labor breakdown. Then we're going to talk about construction meetings, and then move on to our site logistics as well as the final site plan. So the project staffing team, we have our project executive up top, and then followed by our project manager. He's the one that's going to be kind of running the, pro the project um, and our four departments. Our four departments include the field department, scheduling, BIM, and safety departments. All these departments work together in unison to keep construction running smoothly throughout the construction phase. All right, here's a little labor breakdown. So at the top here, we have our orange line. That's the super and project engineer. They're going to be on site full time throughout the project. They're going to be taking the brunt of the work and taking main responsibilities both in the office and in the field. The blue line there is our project manager. He'll be there more in the beginning with buyout and buying out all the subcontractors and keeping things moving forward. And then it'll slowly trickle down to part, part time and then slowly after that go west. Um, he's going to be managing the site, but again, our project engineer and superintendent will be kind of taking the brunt of the work. And with the green line, we have our BIM coordinator. He's again going to be there in the beginning of the work. He will um, be coordinating the mechanical subcontractors, kind of getting all the, figure out all the little tiny problems that we have before they actually get into the field. Lastly, we have our project executive, scheduler, and safety officer. They're going to be there a couple times a month, kind of just supporting the project with all the updates that we have for you. So with construction meetings, we are a very transparent company. And so we start off with our weekly progress meetings with the OAC, Owner, Architect, Contractor. These will, we, for, these pro, for these meetings, we will make an agenda for you guys to go over the following items. The two we look ahead, submittal log, RFI log, non-conformance report log, and change order log. These will kind of help you to get all the bearings and know what's going on throughout the project. We will also have a weekly foreman meeting. In these meetings, we will also have the owner as well as the contracting team there with all the foremans. This, we will kind of get all the information you need on site and um, provide you with like what's going on, updates on the site so we can get you guys out there as well. And we also have weekly progress meetings in-house. This is kind of to get the agenda and kind of get everyone talking in-house to find maybe any problems or update everyone on what is going on. And lastly, we have our monthly project meetings with all our, all our staff in-house. This is to provide updates and things like that for the project. So here's our site logistics plan for the foundation phase, just to get our bearings um, out of there. On site east, we have Pleasant Street, and then site west is uh, Ambet's Lane going on. So as Vincent said, we'll be starting construction on Community Center South of the site and then moving counterclockwise through from then from there. We have our site storage on our on site north as well as the dumpsters there for this phase. And then we have our site trailer on the site east of the project. We we'll also have our gate on the site south northeast corner of our project. We have our trailer next to the entrance because we feel all deliveries should go through the superintendent so we can show them where to go through the project. And lastly we have parking on this uh, site south because for any contractor, owner, architect, and any other visitor that we have on site. Uh, we will not have subcontractors be parking on site. Uh, we, will, we have a designated parking area in Ambed's Lane for them to park. Uh, moving on to the structural steel phase. Um, again, like Ben said, we will be starting community center south and then going counterclockwise around our building. Nothing else really changes except for the movement of the dumpsters which kind of go closer to the building uh, due to the fact that it will just be closer access when we start putting things inside. And lastly, here's a finished plan of our project. We just kind of wanted to show you what we planned it would look like at the, for the finished project. I'm going to hand it off to James for quality management. Thank you, Jake. Uh, again, I'm James. I'm going to be talking about the quality management plan and our contract administration. It's our quality management plan. It's our system, our system of management procedures to achieve 
quality that's been set in specifications as well as the standards that you, the owner, have set for us. Our responsibility for quality, our project engineer and superintendent will be doing safety and quality walkthroughs as well as the pro progress photos and uh, data collection to make sure that the quality of work is up to the standards and specifications. For testing and inspections, we're going to have it done by the various parties that's needed, uh, whether it be the authority having jurisdiction with the town of Randolph, uh, the third party agency that you were, that you were going to hire, or be the architect for the quality. For, uh, that testing is going to happen all throughout the different phases for construction. We're going to have mock-ups of individual pieces of work. This allows the subcontractor to know exactly the scope of work that they need for all areas of construction, whether it be interior, exterior, site, etc. And for our non-conformance and deficient work reports, we're going to make sure that we stay on top of all of our subcontractors. And if they have any deficient work or work that needs to be reworked, they will know within a couple days and they will have the rework done. I wanted to show you a little bit of the detailed uh, concrete quality control that we're going to have. Uh, te testing is going to begin right at the beginning and periodically at the plant as well on site. We uh, go through our uh, placing operations. As you can see, I have some tests that we have for concrete when it comes out of the truck and the site's being placed in our foundations and footage. Uh, these items of quality here for both precast and cast in place, uh, we really make sure that that these items of quality are, are right to the specifications to make sure that we don't have to go back into our schedule and rework all this. Going on to contract administration, I'm going to talk about our practices, procedures, and activities for our field personnel. Uh, our responsibilities, like I said, our project engineer and superintendent, they're going to, call, they're going to be constantly walking through the site, making sure, uh, making sure that um, work's being done, and as well as paperwork for the change order and the non-conformance report any claims that come in from you, the owner, or any subcontractors that, that file a claim. For pre-bid meetings with TOR project site, all subcontractors that come on and are awarded the bid need to go through uh, a walkthrough of the site to make sure that they know exactly the scope of work that they need. Any addenda to resolve the contract documents, uh, again, dealt with the project engineer and the design consultant and there. And from there, we will deal with the uh, addendum. Coordination of inspections and commissioning with third-party agencies. Again, Vincent mentioned that it's uh, all got activities in the schedule and that we have, have full coordination with the uh, commissioning parties. And for completion list, punch-out list, we at Sumner Construction uh, create uh, completion lists to make sure all areas of construction that need to be completed before the punch-out list are done is done. That way, we're not going in with the punch-out list saying we need, still need to put drywall up, still need to put paint up. And then the architect has to come in a second time to make sure the punch out lists are, are complete. Mm -hmm. And for procuring subcontractors, it starts with the project engineer and the design consultant. They're going to finalize the bid items and send them out to the subcontractors. All of these subcontractors have a pre previous relationship with us and also have all the qualifications and experience for that phase of construction. All bids that we receive, they're going to be uh, organized through the bid packet breakdown that Kyle mentioned earlier. Our project manager is going to approve the contracts, and because we're 100% transparency with you, the owner, we're going to have you finalize the offer to make sure that you know the exact subcontractor and the scope of work they're going to be doing for your project. Again, here are the big factors that are going to be approved at the 60% CD docs. I'm going to hand it off to Kyle for risk management. Yeah, so I'm going to discuss our risk management um, efforts that we've already put in as a team for your project. Um, the, these identify risk for the project management team, meaning you, the owner, and your architect and engineer, and us as a constructor all together, what are our big risks for the project? And we've identified some of them here, but um, moving forward, we've created this, uh, this project risk matrix, and it assesses each of those risks um, based on the possibility of occurrence um, and the impact that they could have on the project should they occur. And we have looked very deep into each of these risks that we've come up with and come up with three risks here that we have deemed the most um, important to place um, our efforts in mitigating. Uh, this includes cold weather concrete, a possible fluctuation in steel price, and a lot of the specialty items that you're having put in on your job and some complications that could arise with that type of work. Um, as you can see here, we have identified some of the mitigation tactics for cold weather concrete that we have come up with. 
we've carried an allowance of five days um, within the schedule already for lost time for this work since it's going on in the winter months. We also have asked that all our subcontractors carry materials and equipment to cure the concrete correctly. Um, we also plan to, following the notice to proceed, get on top of BIM coordination and coordinating the sleeves in the uh, slab very early. And we have, we plan to only hire an experienced cold weather concrete contractor, someone that does this every season and knows what they're doing. Um, and James detailed the quality management testing that will be done for this section. And with the possible fluctuation in steel price that could occur in our market, given the things that are going on, um, we are looking for informed steel contractors who understand what is going on in their market. And we have been looking into this very um, deeply. And what you need to understand as an owner, since there's so much going on right now in the market, is that we need the notice to proceed on the correct date. Um, so we can lock in a steel price that we've already been uh, provided. Um, this is a very important for sticking with our GMP and um, we uh, would like to also notice that um, there could be complications with um, equipment and the rise of um, price of equipment as well and we are looking that into that as a project management team. Lastly, uh, some of the specialty items that we have listed on the right there, um, some of the tricky items that are being put in on the job, such as the wood athletic flooring, the barn door, and um, some of the athletic equipment that's going in. Um, we understand that this is not an everyday contractor's work, uh, so we're hiring people who, where this is a large piece of their business, um, and we want them to have a full understanding of what is entailed in the work and what needs to be done on our project. Now I'm going to hand it off to Jake for safety. Again, I'm Jake, and so we're gonna talk about safety. Um, for this project, we have created an intensive site-specific safety plan as shown in our proposal. Um, but we've kind of wanted to highlight just the kind of basics that we go about doing, uh, managing safety on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so first off, we have weekly toolbox talks. These are kind of, in the beginning of a work week, we will have everyone get together, all workers, foreman, and superintendent, get together and kind of talk about a specific topic throughout the week. This will kind of get everyone involved and know what's going on around them as well as what they are doing, to kind of keep it aware that there are other people on the site. We also have daily walkthroughs by the superintendent. Our superintendent will be there 24-7 you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So he will, be, he will also be doing all the safety involved inside the project, but at the end of each day, he will be walking around our site and kind of walking through and looking for any clutter that any subcontractors left behind. This will kind of keep the site safe from any tripping hazards that may occur. We also, as a project management team, will provide PPE to any visitors that come on site and to any workers who forget it you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, any visitors, any owner, you guys ever need PPE, we will provide it for all. And some safety con controls that we think are specific to this site are falling hazards. So on this site, we'll implement a 100% tie-off rate as well as a ladder's last policy. This policy, uh, we will use other means of egress to get up, such as scissor lifts, uh, fork lifts, uh, rowing scaffolds, just things like that to avoid any ladders. Also, we know there's a lot of storefronts on your building. So we will implement a two-man minimum while working on scissor lifts while putting up the storefronts. This will kind of keep not only people on the scaffold safe, but as well as the people around them from any falling. Now we're going to hand it off to Vince to talk about sustainability. Thanks, Jake. So um, in today's built environment at Summer Construction, we understand that a lot of the sustainable efforts are a thanks to some great design work that's being done by architects and engineers, and as well as having willing owners that are willing to pay and implement these features on their projects. But at Summer Construction, we understand that uh, we also play a role in helping the built environment. So I've listed three ways that we plan on doing so throughout this project. Way number one being minimizing paper waste. So at Sumner Construction, we pride ourselves on being a cutting edge um, technology company. 
with uh, so with a combination of the different construction software programs like Procore that we're going to be using, as well as the different technology, like all of our project team members having iPads, that's uh, going to greatly reduce the amount of paper that we use on our projects compared to say 10 years ago. And our local material sourcing, so all materials that we can uh, find locally is uh, going to be a great resource for us because it's going to cut down on the amount of emissions that are caused by uh, material delivery. And it's also economically sustainable because it's going to be supporting the local business environment. And for waste management at Summer Construction, we're big believers in eliminating, minimizing, and reusing as much construction waste as possible. And um, in order to do that, in all of our pre-bid meetings and uh, before our subcontractors come on site, uh, we sit down, we meet with them, we talk about our sustainability goals and principles with them, and we come up with a plan to try to make sure that our subcontractors are being just as sustainable as uh, we hope that they'll be. So now I'm going to pass it uh, back to Jake to talk about public outreach, and then we'll wrap up our presentation. So we understand that our site is in close proximity to a park, uh, ice rink, and of course houses. So in the beginning of the construction, we'll have a monthly public outreach meeting. These meetings will be led by us, the contractor, but you will also have the owner and architect be there. These meetings will be open to the public for them to ask any questions, have any comments or concerns that they feel are that the project will hold. We also have a website. This website will have two parts, one being a two-week look ahead. This two-week look ahead, again, will just provide the public with enough information that they need to kind of know what's going on around them. Um, lastly, we have a feedback page where anyone can write comments, questions, and concerns for us, and we, can, we, will, we will get a response to them within a week. And in summary, um, we went through our estimate, the $7.2 million uh, for our GMP, a schedule of 16 months, and many of the other things that we plan to implement on your project. I would like to thank you on behalf of our, my teammates for letting us present to you when we're done the presence today, and we look forward to potentially working with you in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Uh, you know, a question I don't know if I'm going to ask, but um, construction contingency. Um, you're at 60% construction, doc construction documents. C correct. Um, do you plan on using that to get to 100% and then not have any construction contingency? Or was no, we plan to carry a uh, contingency for construction. Um, we do understand that this may be a slightly higher um, contingency uh, since we are at the 60% um, documents phase. Um, and if we were at a lower phase, uh, this could come in at a lower number. But um, we plan, it, this is really just the cost of doing the work um, for us as a constructor and any possible um, future uh, things that may arise on the project and this allows us to be able to financially um, handle all of these uh, happenings going forward and it really allows us um, to be well prepared for your job. So you that's the capture design from 60 to 100, but then also capture construction? Uh, yes, it does capture the, um, the as, as I detailed in the uh, bid package, it's not all design is complete at this point, mm -hmm. so this does capture that. Uh, one of the risks you identified is an economic downturn. Yes. I'm wondering. Why that's we we, we said I believe I listed economic upturn. Am I wrong? I think one slide showed upturn and another slide showed downturn. So this slide showed downturn. Ah, and you have upturn in this slide. Upturn is the correct um, risk. Um, this is a risk because uh, other our subcontractors get busy, um, and this could cause uh, some complications for them. So that's what we looked into. So your, it's construction pricing escalation? That as well. Is, is, is that the risk? Um, that's a piece of that same risk. All right. Like availability of subs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, so we, as a, as a community, the community has raised an interest in, in having this be a green building, and we're not quite sure what we 
what we want to do there yet. But we're considering perhaps going forward with a lead certification. Um, can you explain how you as a CM would contribute to our efforts to achieve lead certification for the project? Sure, we can. Uh, Vince, would you like to handle that question? Yeah, no, sure, absolutely. So um, right now, um, the, just the roof design of the building, we think would um, lend itself very um, well to um, presenting some sustainable options. So there's a section of flat roof that we think that maybe it'd be a great idea to incorporate um, some type of a green roof uh, that might also complement the greenhouse that's also on the project. And the sloped roof sections, we think uh, that those could be some great spots for some solar panels. So um, just with our prior relationships with Dunleaf projects before, being able to bring in uh, some environmental specialists that specialize in green roofs and solar panels to kind of help those uh, the, the, with the design and the execution of some of those uh, ideas. I would also like to uh, go on top of that, and we've done multiple um, tests with other projects for like heat pollution and so on. Um, we also could implement different things, making sure that the air quality within your building is uh, top notch. Um, I believe there are some standby, uh, standalone controls in the uh, mechanical system, and upgrading that into like direct digital controls. Uh, making sure that that um, system is as um, a, as innovative as possible. Um, I have one comment um, regarding the, uh, I guess, team on the project. Um, there was a chart uh, for the uh, project executive and the project manager and the hours um, and then we went in the, the chart, and then there was a chart before that that said how many, the cost, how many yeah. hours the hours, yeah. and us. So uh, there is, I, I feel there is a little bit of um, um, discrepancy between the project executive um, and the project manager. I, I am not sure I like the idea of project manager being full time and then dropping into part time. I feel that manager needs to stay involved for the entire uh, project because he or she serves as a liaison between you know many parties so that's the only comment I have. So we, we feel our, our superintendent and project engineer can kind of take the brunt of the work. Of course the project manager will be there to help and to manage the site obviously but um, if anything comes up and like, any problems arise the project manager will be there to help out and be there. Take care of it. Also, we plan on providing a very experienced project engineer who has a lot of experience with uh, closeout for the project, um, and we plan on having him be being fully capable for closing out all the contracts. And that's why we feel that the project manager can be a little less involved at the end as a project team. I asked this question earlier, kind of piggybacking off that. If we award you and you use that plan and we don't feel like that that's adequate we want a full-time project manager you plan on going for more money absolutely not um one uh comment that i have as an owner i didn't know who the full plan was so i think the airport airport example is very clean and understandable um just our subcontractors are involved in that process Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's one of the uh, core principles of pole planning is being able um, to uh, utilize our subcontractors and get them involved with the process uh, because we understand that as CMs we have uh, a lot of expertise uh, in construction, but the subcontractors that are doing this work every single day, they're the real experts. So having that combined effort of uh, working together has um, led to a great success as far as our uh, staying on schedule goes. Um, I will say from your competitors, you have the longest duration construction schedule. Are there opportunities for you to uh, decrease your overall duration? So we, um, I don't work for some of the other um, companies that you saw earlier, so I, don't, I can't speak um, to what they have in their schedule as far as durations go. I'm not sure 
um, how accurate their schedules are, what softwares or uh, methodologies that they're using. But what I can tell you is that our system um, is going to be accurate. Uh, I don't want to come in here and tell you that you're going to have this project complete in 12 months and not be able to stay to that. But where we've spent a lot of time with, with, with this schedule, we've sat down with the different members of the project team, and we're confident that this schedule is both accurate and achievable. I overall, I, I think it was a good presentation. I uh, definitely like the color coded um, in it when you have a lot of a lot of numbers yeah. and light <laughs> items. You spent a lot of time on that. I mean, when I know that uh, based on my experience, some clients get lost in all these charts that we come up with and all that. So color coding does help, and I've done that before in my life. Um, it uh, helped quite a bit to reorganize things for some people. So, yes. Thank you. Yeah, no, I would echo that. I thought the, the presentation of the budget was, was very clean. Um, I didn't quite follow all the safety stuff, but I did see that you had a plan and, and that you were going to have toolbox docs. And I do think that whenever you, I think when you, when you, um, Come on, you say you have an excellent something, or it's really good, or it's the best. Um, it, it begins to sound like puffery if you don't quantify, you know, the benefit back to the owner. So my recommendation, and this is not just for safety, it's really for everything, is trying to use metrics and say we're going to reduce this by X percent, or we're going to have zero injuries on this job, or really try to use metrics and, and less qualitative. Uh, offering. Um, so that's that's my only comment there. Otherwise, I thought it was really really good presentation. I like the. I thought your logistics plan was uh, particularly good. I can really visualize um, where people would be. One thing was you referenced parking off site. Is that correct? Um, yes, nearby. So you, that that should be shown. Mm -hmm. if, if you if you're saying something nearby and you're not, sh you should show it on the same plan so mm -hmm. that. You know what nearby means. Okay. Yes. Um, also, you know, the, we know that it's important that residential abutters here. We know that's a big piece of it. I think showing those abutters and pointing them out in this plan would also be important. Okay. So you get a sense of the proximity. You get a sense that you've taken that into account um, in the various ways to be impacted. But um, yeah, general. Someone a Vikings fan? A lot of purple, a lot of yellow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is actually, um, so our company logo, we know that Professor Sumner is a USC guy, so we stole the, the USC logo, but we thought it'd be too blatant if we just ripped that off, so then we switched our colors to the LSU purple and gold. So, uh, I was almost say, the Vikings <laughs> colors. Yeah. So, go I was say you got negative points for having the name Sumner. <laughs> Yeah. We knew it's us. Some people may love it. Some people might just feel very strongly about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Uh, yeah, Professor Johnson. The, uh, the couple comments I have is the uh, transition you guys had in the in the presentation was really good. So uh, that goes a long way. Um, and I like the uh, schedule slides that you had. The these transitions mm -hmm. here. Those are good. Yeah. 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 yeah I like, yeah, how you kind of dove into the set section of the schedule is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that actually goes well with your explanation. When you were asked why you have such a long, longer schedule than other companies, you say, well, we put so much time into that. Yes, you did, because you just proved it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of time. I'm happy you guys liked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, really good job. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much.